is Suri. And this is Sean. And we're the Simpsons siblings? What do we, wait, what do we talk about? Simpsons all the time. All the time? Well, most of the time. 99% of the time. Unless it's April Fool's. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're talking about Homer Alone. Which is a fun episode. I liked watching this one again. Yeah, it's weird because this is one where it doesn't... It's not like one of the more popular episodes, but it's got a lot of solid moments. And there's a lot of moments in this that I forgot were in this episode. Like, there were just sort of moments that sort of float somewhere. And I'm like, they're moments, but I don't know what episode they're from. But then you realize they're from this one. Yeah. Ye- Should I do the huge... The usual intro. Do the thing. The shenanigans. All right, this is Homer Alone, Season 3, Episode 14. Originally aired on February 6th, 1992. Directed by Mark Kirkland and written by David M. Stern. We've only got one guest star, but it's the only guest star you need, baby. That's Phil Hartman. (laughs) You may remember him such episodes as... (laughs) Yes. And then we have the chalkboard message, I will not spank others. Which, I was curious, who do you think he was spanking? Uh, I could see him maybe doing that to Millhouse, like, as a joke. I was, um, I was picturing Martin. Yeah. I'm also kind of picturing, um, I'm picturing when when Homer was um, slapping Uter with the towel. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and I know that happens after this. What but... does he say? Like, I'm full of chocolate. I'm yeah, full of chocolate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe he was doing that. I mean, that happens in a later episode, but yeah. maybe he got the idea for that first. I don't know. And then the couch gag, they all come in and form a human pyramid. And I love Maggie on the top, just putting her arms out like, ta-da. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some cute Maggie moments in this, just from the start, even with the couch gag. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, starting out, this is definitely one of those scenes where I knew it happened, but I didn't know what episode it was from. It was mm-hmm. this whole Roadrunner Coyote opening. Yeah, with like the, the species name and everything. Yeah, it's super cute. And I love that we're never really told why. Yeah, it's just, they're just wanting to be silly. This is just a normal day. You know, chaos. Just, you know, Marge is used to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of when it starts, when you start seeing all these things piled on. And it's not even really a snowball effect. It's just all of these individual things that pile up. It's that, like a constant wearing. Yeah, that you can tell this is her every day. Like at the beginning, the lamp gets knocked over and broken. And she's like defiantly saying, well, I'm not cleaning that. And it's only like a half second pause. Ah, who am I kidding? And yeah. she just sounded so defeated and like... Like, that's just her every day. And even she's trying to protest and make people realize, hey, I'm doing a lot around here, and then nobody's listening. Yeah, when she gets to the part where she breaks down, it's like, no wonder. Like, nobody is surprised that she's gotten to this point. Like, if anything, she should have broken down earlier because she's putting up with so much crap. Yeah. I love the animation on when Marge changes Maggie's diaper. And, like, her eyes never leave her. She she does it all in, like, one swift motion. Like, she's practiced. And I just remember being sort of autopiloting through the diaper changes because we've done it so many times. Well, she's been changing those diapers for three plus years now. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Maggie's just always going to be a baby. Except for when she's not. Yeah, and barely speaks. Time doesn't have to make sense. (laughs) Oh, also Maggie's burp was adorable because it was very much the Simpsons burp style. Yeah. Just the bleh. Just perfect. Got that wiggle <laughs> on the lips. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Then she's preparing the sandwiches, which reminds me of, um, do you ever, have you ever seen that picture of our Nana putting the sandwich, sandwiches together? No. She put like all the sandwiches for a month to get, well, maybe not a month, for like a week together. And she would do that where she would spread all of the the uh, bread out and she would do it all at once and then she'd yeah. throw them all in the fridge. I don't know, it just reminded me of that picture. Everyone had all their own requirements on being cut diagonally or no oh crust. Oh my or... god, and they all had very specific requests and Homer wants double bologna. 
And the way he goes, oh, can I have two sandwiches? <laughs> well, I have written down, it's not just that, it's what leads up to it, because they're all talking and complaining about something. Mm-hmm. Marge, I split my pants today. Ooh, can I have two sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely perfect line delivery right there. I love it. I'm trying to remember what they say afterwards, where where she's like, okay, Lisa, I took the pimentos out. And then she says something to Bart, I can't remember. And then she goes to homework. And Homer, we're out of bologna. And it's like, okay, okay, don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love, too, that then she says, one at a time, one at a time. And there's a pause. And then all three of them go at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. It's just very well choreographed, this entire lead up to her breakdown. Uh... We have the whole thing where Bart and Lisa are like, oh, the bus won't leave without us. And then it absolutely does. <laughs> Bart's like, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> and, the, and Homer wanting, like, of all the things for Homer to want repaired, it has to be a giant bowling ball. And his line of the alley ball. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, it's, it's something that he could easily fix this entire situation for her and make it so much easier for her just by doing something tiny. Or like, you could just not put bottle caps into bowling balls. Yeah, how does that happen? <laughs> how does that happen? Oh, goodness. Uh, so we have this montage of Marge doing all of her chores and errands, and she goes to the grocery store, and I noticed one of the things she picks up is Krusty Brand Duck Sausage Pizza. Yeah, it's funny because I... As many times as I've seen this episode growing up, I don't remember that. Yeah. And it really stood out to me. I was like, ugh. I don't know about that. Well, I, I like to, in the car, like with Bart and Lisa are in the back bickering. Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like you quite get that as much on the newer Simpsons. Like, yeah. Lisa acts a lot more mature. And I love the older episodes where Lisa is more of a kid. Yeah. Like she's got she's got her personality and her interests and she is very mature, but sometimes you do see that regular little kid just, you know, being yeah. a kid. And to date the episode, we've got Maggie in the front passenger seat of the car <laughs> facing forward. Yeah, I noticed that I wrote that down a little bit later because it happens a couple times. Oh, okay. And it's not even it's not even really blinked at. It's yeah. just she just threw her in the front seat. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But things were different too, like with air airbags weren't standard. Yeah, because I think that's a big part of the danger with that. Uh, we get one of those classic floating faces scenes from early Simpsons. Yep. And of course we get another delivery of alley balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that terrible prank call. Like, I know it's not real and it's fake, but it's still like... It just grates me every time. Yeah, that makes me uncomfortable. And it's it's supposed to, which is, it does its job so well. And Marge's freak out is really well done, too. Yeah. The I, way, like, every, there's not a single line in her face that doesn't move or wiggle. Yeah, I wrote Marge, Marge uh, jiggly eyes. Yeah. Because <laughs> they just kind of, like, shake all over the place. And I'd love to do a, I need to go on Fringy Act and look at that on a frame by frame because just every single frame is just drawn yeah. so well. Now, while Marge is blocking the bridge, mm-hmm. we see a bunch of people complaining and there's one guy that's like from the mafia mm-hmm. and he talks about having a body in the trunk. Yeah. But we never see him again. We don't, I don't remember seeing him in like the background with no. like the Springfield Mafia and everything. And we've already established Fat Tony at this point in the yeah. series. He's come up. So, I, I mean, they might not have been able to get the guest actor. Um, I don't know. Is this... I, I, I should have looked this up. Is this the first appearance of Artie Pie? I don't know. It might be. Because I'm a huge Artie Pie fan. Artie Pie in the Sky. I love how Kent gets in the Channel 6 Sky Harness. I love how and, they just have like a name, a special name for and it. I, and then he ends up hitting his head on the bridge, just like Homer does in Springfield Gorge. Yeah. But yep. I wonder how much of that is Artie Pie flying the helicopter so it slams oh, him in. Oh, I didn't think he was, of that. he was just insulting his career. Yeah. Oh, that that's absolutely true. And it's just, it, it adds nothing to the scene. Like, it's just pointless. That's... And and, well, and the bagel, too. Yeah, and then the next frame, you see it falling for yeah. like just a couple, half a second. <laughs> I love it. So there's much. all these little things that 
make up the Simpsons that are not important at all to the story, like exactly. you said. Exactly. But it's the soul of the Simpsons. That's it right there. Uh, we've got another case of Homer accidentally mocking himself on TV because he... Because I, I'm try, I was trying to figure out the best way to word this. So he sees something on TV and he doesn't realize it pertains to him. And so he mocks it. And then he realizes that it's him. I think we had Marge calling in on the radio before. Yeah. Um, and I, I was also thinking of the bear when the bear's attacking the house. Yeah. And he's like, well, that's a tough day for the Impsons family. Yeah. And we also have two like going around at Christmas looking in everybody's windows. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it was Bart that was like, look at this dope. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh, my God. So I never noticed the police tape in the scene. Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Distressed it's... mother, please stay back. I feel like they just got that on standby. Yeah. Uh, Homer stupidly and then sweetly luring her out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> and Wiggum's like, just just don't put your mouth on it or anything. <laughs> He's like, if you come out, you can get snuggles tonight. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> But then, and then afterwards, he's legitimately reassuring, you know, yeah. which is totally Homer. He he means well. He does something stupid. He tries to make it right. Yeah. And ain't that just Homer? And all's good until the next episode. Exactly. And it all resets. And also, the, the fact that this sort of intro to the episode is kind of the same as um, the one where Marge goes to jail, because that's the same thing happens where she gets overwhelmed. Yeah. And then she ends up um, accidentally shoplifting. So it's it's basically the same episode, except it kind of just goes a little differently yeah. after the first act. And we have her getting arrested. And all us ladies on the force, we know just how you feel. Oh, thank you. Do you think you could loosen these cuffs? No. <laughs> <laughs> the picture of her hair. Yeah. Okay, so when they do the mug shots for Marge, I was wondering how they compared to her mug shot at the beginning of Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 2, which was the previous episode that we covered. Mm-hmm. I did not plan ahead in picking two episodes in which Marge has mug shots. Or didn't you? Or di- <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't do anything, didn't I? So uh, that seems about the same height. Yeah. I so think it's it is. a little bit in between six feet and seven. Or well, it's. Just about halfway between. <laughs> That's also known as six and a half feet. <laughs> it's the weekend. I can't do math, Sean. You can't make me do simple math. Uh, yeah, so it looks like they were actually consistent between the mug shot at the beginning of Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 2 and the mug shot here, which I know you guys were all waiting for that answer. You guys were checking news sites. You were vehemently researching that your fingers became numb <laughs> but yes the mug shots are the same okay in height i'm sorry <laughs> that's what we're here for <laughs> these are the these are the questions you need answered desperately and that's why you tune in every two weeks <laughs> okay so so we've got this really sudden, out of nowhere, intense argument between Quimby and Wiggum. And it gets so intense. Like, they keep trying to one-up each other with their threats. And the threats just don't relate to each other, too. It's just, like, they're not listening to each other. They're just throwing <laughs> things out once the other's done speaking. You can talk the talk. Can you walk the walk? It's like, what? Are you even going anywhere with this? And uh, Quimby Quimby making it Marge Simpson Day, like, there's just, it's just pandering. There's no real reason for it. He's just doing it for the votes. For the women vote. Yes. Uh, I absolutely love this Rancho Relaxo commercial. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) It's amazing. It's beautiful. The the guy that's in that he's in that costume the whole time. This the Spanish he's supposed to be yeah. a conquistador. Like he's going to the pool in his armor and... <laughs> Oh and and it's and it's uh Springfield's only two star spa. Ooh. And fun fact that you should all remember, you cannot spell relaxo without relax. 
fun fact of the episode. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they're basically like Homer and Marge are kind of laying next to each other in bed when this ad comes on and Marge spills that she wants to have a vacation just by herself. And when she first says that she wants a vacation, Homer's like, well, you know, what about those monsters, those three monsters we have? And I love that Homer includes himself in his rant. I'm no day at the beach either. And he does the whiny voice. <laughs> Marge, can I have a sandwich? <laughs> he wants sandwiches all throughout this episode. Yeah, he's eating a sandwich by himself later yeah. on. Like, he's just very sandwich oriented. Like, that's all That's all he can think about. Uh, so they end up making an agreement that she can go on vacation by herself. And... Um, we got this whole sequence where the kids the kids have to stay with Patty and Selma. Yeah. And, and Maggie just... Maggie's strong, and she stretches, too. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And this whole uh, running with the train bit, which is just making fun of, like, a million movies where he's running next to the train. I love the last one. Yeah. Where, like, Marge is almost out of range. They're, they've let go of their hands. How do I use the pressure cooker? <laughs> She's got like literally two seconds to explain this. She's not going to be able, and her <laughs> response is just perfect. Like not just like figuring out everything. She knows Homer, and she knows to say, "Don't." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with these sort of episodes, it's not. It's what you said. It's not just that that they know each other. It's that they know each other perfectly. Yeah. She knows all of Homer's nuances that. You know, you're not going to say, why would you ask that? Because you're not going to be surprised by it if you've been married to Homer for this long. Yeah. It's beautiful. So she walks into Rancho Relaxo and the radio says, you're listening to Coma, (laughs) W-K-O-M-A. Perfect. And I don't know, do you want to say the next part or can I? You can. Coming up next, a super set of songs about clouds. <laughs> I knew you'd do the voice. <laughs> I'm 90% sure that's Harry Shearer who does um, Mr. Burns. Because I saw him in an interview and that's kind of just what his normal voice sounds yeah. like. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we have Troy McClure doing the video tour. And uh. It's just the way he expresses himself. Mm-hmm. And speaks and projects. He is so excited about every product he is selling. Yeah. Well, I get the impression he's excited to be paid to talk about. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the real thing. It, it honestly might be one of my favorite segments, just on his delivery alone. <laughs> he's got the finest R-rated movies Europe has to offer. <laughs> Such as, and then the voice is <laughs> Thelma and Louise. <laughs> and happy little elves. And the erotic awakening of S. <laughs> I love it so much. Which I love later than Marge is watching Thelma and Louise. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Oh, man. Going backward a little bit, I think it's really cute. The um, When Homer's trying to explain to Maggie that it's just going to be the two of them. And he does the thing where he holds the picture and he just kind of puts his fingers down. So it's just the two of them. Yeah. Like, that's such... It's sweet. And he's, you can tell that he's trying to relate with her in a way that doesn't involve speech. And that makes her nervous. And she does, like, the quicker pacifier thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Bart and Lisa with the tongue sandwiches at Patty and Selma's. Which look disgusting. It's just <laughs> a whole tongue. Like, the tongue's actually, like, coming out of the sandwich. Like, the sandwich is a mouth. Yeah. Why? Uh, and they, they decide it's time to hit the hay. It's 1230 in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm aware of what time it is. Which is the opposite of what happens when they go to live with the Flanders. Yeah. Because don't they have to go to bed at like 6 p.m. or something? Yeah, and they peel back the window blinds and see kids playing outside in yeah. the sun. Yep. Yep. Uh, Homer is just really, really trying in his own way with like the staple gun on the diaper and the like the sock puppets. <laughs> Sam's <laughs> Which, little helper gets a little aggressive there. Yeah, and isn't he afraid of sock puppets? Or did maybe he... he is because of this. Oh. 
I didn't think of that. I was thinking maybe he was overcoming his fear just to make Maggie happy. I think this is what causes the fear. But it could be what causes the fear. Wow, that's some deep lore. Oh my god. We can just stop the episode now. That's perfect. That's that's it. That's all you need to know. Really, we should just edit out the whole beginning of the episode and just have (laughs) that line. (laughs) Just start it with sock puppets. (laughs) Oh, where? Uh, I also noticed after Santa's little helper jumps him, Maggie starts clapping. <laughs> that's cute. Well, she <laughs> thinks it's part of the show. Uh, we get a lot of quick cuts during these couple scenes, like from Homer to Patty and Selma to Marge. There's a lot of just real quick back and forths. And the family's very split up, too. Yeah, we don't usually, like, usually we'll have, like, two-way split up, but not this much. Oh, I wrote down that I, I should look up what a blackhead gun is, but now I'm kind of glad that I didn't. Yeah, I think we can just assume that what it is. It does something gross with your with blackheads. Yeah. Which, you know, just, just, Probably let, just let like, them... Imagine like a little suction thing. Like, like I, I heard there's like some show about like a pimple popper or something, some documentary thing. And like, why would you do that? Why would you watch that <laughs> show? Oh, why not? Mm, I can think of like at least 30 reasons. <laughs> oh, Homer's facial expressions on the lullaby when he's just so tired. Yeah, he's he's trying there. <laughs> you can tell he's trying so hard. And his words, he's, he's like, la, 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 la. May your Christmas days be <laughs> nice. What does that mean? <laughs> it's so sweet. I love it. Also notice he calls her his little pork chop. Yeah. Which wasn't that the toy he got her on the first episode. <gasps> Mr. Simpson, you dropped your pork chop. <laughs> yep, exactly. So maybe I'm, I would like to think that she kept that, loved that toy, and he developed the nickname from it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of have Maggie showcasing her little troublemaking streak, her her craftiness, where she uh, does the escape. I just call it Maggie's Adventures. Yeah. Because she has these, and it always reminds me of, like, Rugrats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's something kind of pure to it, because you know this can't really happen, so you're not really worried for her safety. It's just baby fun shenanigans. And they always have perfect music for these scenes, too. Yeah. It's cute. Uh, I'm loving how Homer didn't check on her till 11.45 in the morning. Yeah, and he thinks he's getting away by saying, time for your 9 a.m. feeding. (laughs) Like, oh my god. Did you really think she wouldn't, like, just wake up? Oh, so uh, Barney's over at the house. And I, this is one of my favorite Barney moments. When Homer's freaking out because they can't have, they can't find Maggie. And he's so confident. He goes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make you an omelet. <laughs> and he just acts like he knows better, too. Because Homer's rightly, rightfully freaking out. Oh, yeah. And he's like, you know an omelet fix this. And he has that smug look on his face. <laughs> I use two different kinds of cheese. <laughs> Which, what, how does he know what kind of cheese they have in their fridge? I don't know. It's... It, uh, Barney... I noticed with a lot of early Simpsons seasons, they have these perfect hold music tie-ins. Yeah, when he calls the Department of Missing Children. Yeah. (laughs) And they play Baby Come Back, and he just kind of slowly starts crying. Yeah. Um, So we cut back to Marge, and I'm noticing cigar making is on the activities list of what she's done. Yeah, because she's done everything. Yeah, and I'm trying to I'm trying to picture that. I should have checked because there's that scene where she's laying in the bed and she has lots of stuff from what she's done. Most of it's pretty normal, okay. like things you would associate, and then the the oddball one is just cigar making. Yeah, but I want to see if like while she's laying in bed, if she has like a cigar. Oh yeah, there, that like, would be table. cool. Yeah. Uh, 
I love the stupid hang glider ending to the video where you don't realize he's on a hang glider and then it zooms out. Yeah, he does that silly wave yeah. back at the camera. <laughs> it's just cute. Like, it's there's nothing laugh out loud funny about that little scene. It's just cute and quirky. Yeah. Oh, the, the little tra- scene transition where she has her hair up and she goes into the tub and she comes back out and it's wet. I, I always thought that was just neat. Yeah. I, I always get the feeling, too, that, like, Marge, Marge being married to Homer is her hair up. Mm-hmm. And Marge being separate from Homer is her hair down. And it's mm-hmm. almost sad, like, she's more relaxed. Yeah. It's just her. Like, she needs to, like, I think they can work this out. She just she needs just, to, she she needs to give. Hair, needs to let her hair down once exactly, in a while. Exactly, exactly. And, and it it's all kind of goes back to, to, like, the lamp at the beginning. If she would have. And I'm not I'm not blaming her. Like they should have taken the initiative to fix the lamp, but she should also be like, "Hey, I'm not putting up with this crap," you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's essentially what she does at the end of the episode. But then you know it's a sitcom, so it resets at the end. Oh yeah, it has to. It has to. Uh, <laughs> Patty and Selma telling Homer not to steal any light bulbs, and he <laughs> seriously considers it after that he kind of looks up at the lights he does like several looks back and forth yeah. like he he wouldn't have had that idea but well, maybe, like, oh, maybe he I did it before oh that could be it too he has precedent here i uh, i love just how many ways they can do that marge's hair fake out of like oh it's a bush oh it's somebody getting their hair done and then they have the buckingham palace quick lube <laughs> and <laughs> And the way he says, get your oil change all you wait, governor. <laughs> oh, my God. And the guy that says, don't, he didn't say, don't touch me. Yeah. That is the Just Stamp the Ticket Man. Yeah. Have you seen that Real Gems episode? It's, I have. It's, it could be the most important. If you have not seen Real Gems, tell all video on Just Stamp the Ticket Man. It'll change your life. <laughs> Uh, so Marge says she's coming back in an hour and Homer just freaks out. The part that bothers me, Mm -hmm. she's in the bath Mm -hmm. and she says, pick me up from the train station in an hour. Mm -hmm. So in the course of an hour, Mm -hmm. she's going to get ready, grab her luggage, Mm -hmm. check out of the hotel. Mm -hmm. And then with whatever remaining time is left, hop on the train Mm -hmm. Which means the train is like a 15 minute ride away, so why not drive her to Rancho Relaxo? It's just the, the time difference yeah, there. It's, it's so weird. They should have had her outside of the tub saying that. Or yeah. say maybe two hours. Like one hour seems too short. Because yeah. the train ride would make sense if it took like an hour to get there. Yeah. And unless she just really didn't feel like driving, like she was like, I'm tired. I'm just going to go on the train. I know it's quick, but I don't feel like driving. Yeah. Um, yeah. The time difference doesn't make sense in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. For picky people like us, I should have just said like 430 because we don't know what time it is at that moment. Yeah. But then we would have been looking out the window and trying to determine the time based on where the sun is. <laughs> based on the curvature of the earth and the location of the sun and the horizon. It was 3.30. <laughs> exactly. Basically, they can't win with us. No. They'll just say a wizard did it. <laughs> uh, I love the scene where Wiggum brings back Maggie. And, and he's like, okay, what does your kid look like? He's like, well, she's small. And she's a girl. Okay, we found her. <laughs> oh, does he go bingo? <laughs> yeah. And the fact that he carried her with him, like, he didn't call him. He didn't say, hey, is it one of these pictures of these kids? He's just, like, hiding it behind his back like it's a surprise. Yeah. My God. Uh, Homer's so happy and thankful that Wiggum just sort of forgets about the whole child neglect charges. <laughs> just by like giving him a kiss on the cheek. Yep. Oh, he, he gave him kisses on the lips, I think. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, shucks. I'll just forget about all that. <laughs> oh, what an upstanding police chief. 
this little picture transition where Marge is coming home and she has the picture of her family and she sets it down and they're all ragged. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw somebody mention once it was uh it was like a meme or something where when she's holding up the picture it says twenty nineteen and when she pulled puts it down it says twenty twenty and they're oh. all ragged. <laughs> and sad. It was sad. Yeah, it's just interesting how it, in my mind, when I saw that, it showed that she was taking on the stress of everyone in the family. Mm-hmm. When really, like it if she's be... not there to handle everything, mm-hmm. then everyone else has a horrible time. Yep, and it needs to be spread out. And then if every single person has a little bit of stress, then it's manageable. Versus, she's basically like a scapegoat for their stress. They just pile it on her. Yeah. Uh, the scene with everyone in the bed is so cute. Mm-hmm. The ending with Maggie's eyes closing to the music and she kind of looks at Homer and she looks at Marge and then she gently falls asleep. It's like they just punch me in the heart. Maggie has the best expressions. Yes. It, it, it punch. It's like that scene uh, with with the girl that Bart has a crush on where she like rips his heart out. Mm-hmm. It's like that except then afterwards they just like punch it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I really like the ending. I like when they wrap things up with the Maggie thing. Mm, she's so cute. All right, so that, I mean, that's the episode. I only yeah. have a couple fun facts. Um, uh, uh, writer David Stern noticed that most of the writers were pitching Homer or Bart stories because this was still very early on. And he really wanted to have an episode to focus on Marge. And uh, the title is a play on Home Alone. Yeah. Which I, how did I not notice that? It's one letter difference. I know, jeez. Yeah. But it was a fun episode. It was. This is one of those where it's it's kind of an in-between one where it's not my favorite, but it's not my least favorite. And I feel like people gloss over it a lot. Um, but there's so many great moments, both funny moments, sweet moments. Uh... It's a good, balanced episode. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this will be a good time for us to thank our patron saint. Hallelujah. It's Timothy Burleson. Yeah, you win this week. You win! You win being our only patron. And if you would like to join our Patreon, we are at patreon.com slash Sibs. There will be a link in the description. Also, we're going to be going on summer break soon. Yeah. But... If you're on our Patreon, you will get episodes during the summer. We're going to sprinkle them in. And we're going to start out with a blooper reel for the past two seasons. Uh, and I might oh, get... Oh, dear. You kept those? <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, I did. Only the best, worst things that we have said and done. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, uh, SimpsonSimplings.com. That is not it. <laughs> That's going to go on the rumor reel, which I just announced. <laughs> It's at patreon.com slash SimpsonSibs. And our next episode was chosen by you. I need to stop clapping into the microphone. Specifically, it was chosen by eight of you on Twitter who voted. Thank you for voting. Thank you. And uh, we were voting on great Simpsons summer episodes to end the season with. The one that won is Summer of Four Foot Two, which is season seven, episode 25. Listen to the episode. Nope, you're not going to listen to it. I mean, you can listen to it and watch it. <laughs> He's like, nope. <laughs> you can tell we need to have a summer break soon. <laughs> watch the episode first before you listen to get the full experience. And uh, until then, bye, bye everybody. everybody.